Good morning. Today we are going to speak about Dubliner's uh, work which was published by James Joyce in 1914. It is clearly an important year in the history of the world as it was the year in which the World War I broke out. However, the works were not written in 1914, they were published in 1914. This collection of 15 stories was written between 1905 and 1907. In 1905, uh, when James Joyce was only 23 years old, he wrote the majority of these stories, except for the last one, the epilogue uh, called The Dead, which was written in 1907. The last story, the story he titled, uh, he called The Dead, is longer, denser, more remarkable and um, more experimental than the other stories. It uh, introduces some uh, experimental uh, narrative techniques which will then be um, used again by James Joyce in his masterpiece Ulysses and in, in his more mature works. Going back to Dubliners, however, as I said, it's a collection of 15 uh, short stories. Uh, they are set, obviously, in Dublin, in uh, James Joyce's hometown, the town where he was born, the town where he uh, lived uh, his uh, childhood, um, the town which he rejected. And uh, symbolically, uh, it is remarkable to note that uh, he managed to describe, to be depict his uh, hometown only when he detached from the town itself and moved to another city. He was not living in Dublin anymore. He managed to uh, produce what was then called a topographical symphony. Mm, this uh, realistic and impartial description of the Dublin of the time. Uh, he reproduced, he described um, private spaces and public spaces. Uh, bars, restaurants, homes versus parks, streets uh, and uh, other public spaces. The public spaces were dis depicted uh, when uh, the characters in his stories uh, um, decided to move to transfer to, um, to move from one place to the other. The characters in the stories are all weak and paralyzed. This is why it has been said that the most important theme in uh, the collection of stories is the paralysis of Dublin and of Dubliners. Uh, the characters um, are all from Dublin. They are ordinary people who lead ordinary lives, who do ordinary things, and uh, they are uh, incapable of escaping. So another theme in the work, uh, in all these uh, short stories, is um, the, the difficulty these characters have in uh, um, moving away from their comfort zone. So um, escaping is the opposite of paralysis. Slavery is the opposite of freedom. These characters are not free and not capable of freeing, them, freeing themselves. Um, if we think about the four basic emotions, happiness, sadness, anger and fear, it is clear that uh, one of these uh, emotions uh, is uh, the cause of our paralysis, of our incapability of uh, being brave, being courageous or uh, facing uh, uh, our little inner and outer prisons uh, and uh, the feeling is fear. This is why it is clear that the characters in Dubliners are dominated by fear. What can we say about the style of this uh, work? The, uh, the author, James Joyce, wanted to be objective, impersonal and uh, unobtrusive. Uh, he agreed with T.S. Eliot uh, um, on the fact that the narrator did not have to be an omniscient narrator, but an impartial and impersonal narrator who just described uh, situations, facts, events. Therefore, the, um, 
stories are the style may be seen as a realistic style uh, full of details full of detailed descriptions but um, at the same time, James Joyce did not want to be labelled or categorised as a realistic writer, as a writer belonging to the realistic movement. Uh, because his works, in actual fact, are realistic, yes, but they're also symbolic. They also hide hidden, uh, intense, uh, symbolic uh, uh, meanings and interpretations. Interpretation is also important because the reader uh, will not be told something directly. The message of the story will not be made explicit by the author himself, but uh, Joyce wanted the reader to take part in the story and imply, uh, just like T.S. Eliot's uh, uh, technique of implication, also Joyce wanted the reader to understand, to see inside the character's thoughts. This is why um, the narration is characterized, is uh, represented by this narrated monologue, this uh, free direct speech or free direct thought, what does it mean that the, um, the character's thoughts are presented to the reader? Uh, it is um, a narration uh, which is uh, not affected, not conditioned by the presence of the author, but uh, the author leads the reader into the mind and the heart of the characters themselves, thus presenting their thoughts directly to the reader. Um, what else can we say about uh, Dubliners? Um, I have uh, jotted down some notes on the board as usual, which you cannot see because I am not very good at uh, uh, preparing videos. Um, so we have spoken about the themes and we have spoken about the style and the narration and the narrative technique. Uh, the linguistic register used is it it varies depending on the characters themselves and on the stories the stories have been divided by critics into four different types sometimes also five four categories of stories uh, they represent the phases of life uh, so there are uh, the first stories are on childhood then on adolescence then on public life and on maturity actually on maturity first and then on public life and then there is what has been considered the fifth category which is the epilogue represented by the dead which is uh, slightly different from the other stories as I said it is longer it is more intense and it is closer to Joyce's mature works Evelyn, the story we read together, belongs to the second category I mentioned, which is adolescence. Also because Evelyn is only 19 years old, so she is an adolescent, she is a teenager. Um, you know the plot, it's very simple, but it's not so much the plot that counts in these uh, works, uh, but the message that uh, is passed on or that the reader can imply uh, by um, having this in insight into the characters' lives. Evelyn is 19 years old. She has the possibility of changing her life, of moving away from her comfort zone and going to live with Frank. She has the chance to marry Frank, a man, a sailor, a man she has fallen in love with, uh, and to go and live in Buenos Aires. Uh, the day she has to leave, mm, she is uh, uh, first she is at home looking out of the window. Then she moves uh, through the city to go to uh, catch this boat. Uh, but uh, she has an epiphany. What is an epiphany? epiphany? An epiphany is another device, another technique that James Joyce uses in his works. It is a sudden revelation um, which is triggered by something trivial, uh, by something apparently banal. In the case of uh, Evelyn, the epiphany is the sound of an organ playing an air in the street. 
The sound of this organ brings memories back uh, into Evelyn's mind. She remembers when she was a child, she remembers her mother's words. The air is familiar to her and it brings back um, memories from the past, in particular a promise she had made to her mother to keep the home together. This epiphany prevents Evelyn from moving on. Uh, this is why she decides not to leave, not to change her life, not to escape, but to remain in her comfort zone in Dublin, in her habitual uh, places. Um, and uh, is incapable thus of moving on and of freeing herself or also challenging herself because she has made a promise to her mom. Now the story obviously uh, does not um, um, present any opinions or uh, the author does not judge the characters. He just uh, describes a story, he describes the life of one of his characters, the life of the Dubliners of the time and obviously the reader can uh, uh, have um, his or her own opinions, everyone can uh, interpret the story in a different way. Um, as for the epiphany, uh, we have made uh, some parallelisms in, in class between uh, uh, James Joyce and other authors who have used the epiphany in their works. In particular, we spoke about uh, an Italian author, I don't know if you remember, who used the epiphany but in a different way. Uh, I'm sure you have uh, already guessed that I'm speaking about Luigi Pirandello, in particular about Vitangelo Muscarda's epiphany, the day his wife tells him that his nose is crooked. Actually, she doesn't just tell him his nose is crooked, she tells him his nose is crooked, his ears are um, of different shapes, his eyebrows are strange to their, the, they form, uh, they have a strange shape, his legs, it's a bit of a criticism of everything. So, but that was a different kind of epiphany, um, obviously, because each author um, then uh, produces his or her own uh, unique uh, creation. So um, this was a sub summary of uh, this uh, extraordinary collection of works uh, called Dubliners. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and we will speak about it together uh, when, uh, when I see you uh, during our next video conference. Have a nice day.